हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माई YouTube चैनल सिविल लाइन माई सेल्फ मिलन पटेल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट एल जे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी टूडे टॉपिक इज ट्रैफिक इंजीनियरिंग सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट्स बिगिन अवर सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ ट्रैफिक इंजीनियरिंग फर्स्ट लेट अस रिकॉल ऑल द टॉपिक्स डेट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर दैट आर इंट्रोडक्शन टू ट्रैफिक इंजीनियरिंग ट्रैफिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड ट्रैफिक स्टडीज एंड एनालिसिस in today's lecture we are going to discuss traffic regulation then our second topic will be traffic control devices and lastly we will discuss what is intersection and what are the various types of intersection in detail so let's begin with the first topic which is traffic regulations traffic regulation can be defined as the rules and regulations which or action of road users this is in place in order to prevent accidents and enhance the free flow of traffic some traffic rules and regulations are like do not drink and drive and users of road should avoid to alcohol before and while driving in order to have safe traffic operations on road it is essential to impose adequate traffic regulations so basically it is divided into three parts first is vehicle regulation second is driver regulations and third is road user regulations first let's see what are the vehicle regulations are so to understand it first we have to do registration of any vehicle which is known as rc book then after we have to classify the vehicles according to their weight size and design say for example if i talk about four wheeler then it can be separated as heavy trucks also even size and design of normal car and heavy truck is different so we have to keep all the constraints in mind lastly we have basic knowledge of construction of any vehicle even insurance of any vehicle plays a key role while we want to claim it so this is all about vehicular regulation now let's discuss our second part which is driver regulations so driver regulations can be done by licensing as we know a person must give driving test to get license where the driving skills are tested and without license driving any vehicle is a crime next is physical fitness and age of a driver that matters say for example we prefer experienced driver who is not too young and not too old because of this age physical condition as well as quick decision taking skill reduces while in younger stage with aggression chances of accident are still there and lastly we will discuss about disqualification and endorsement of licenses and speed laws motoring offenses can incur fines and endorsements an endorsement on your driving license means that you have been given points which will remain on your license until they expire depending on the type of offense committed this is usually 4 or 11 years now next is road user regulations here we have to also think for pedestrians cross roads where there are pedestrian crossings always walk on the footpath where there is no footpath walk in the right side of margin of the road so that you can see the traffic coming in the opposite direction next is about cyclist we should provide separate route for cyclist to ensure their safety and comfort on the road last but not the least we should provide facilities to motorcyclist also now let's move to our second topic which is traffic control devices the various aids and devices which are used to control regulate and guide traffic may be called as traffic control devices broadly this fall into five categories first is traffic sign as you can see second traffic signal third traffic light fourth traffic marking and fifth is traffic islands now let's discuss traffic sign first so basically it is classified as regulatory sign warning sign and informatory sign so let's discuss regulatory sign first regulatory signs are meant 
to inform the road user of certain laws, regulation and prohibition. It is further classified into two types where first is directional road sign and second is prohibitory road sign. Here directional road sign have blue background and white symbol. Different type of regulatory road sign are like compulsory turn left as you can see on figure, compulsory turn right, compulsory turn left ahead, compulsory turn right ahead, compulsory keep right, compulsory keep left and compulsory proceed ahead. Now let's discuss prohibitory signs. They have white background, red border and black symbols. Different type of prohibitory signs are like no parking, no entry, no left turn, no right turn, no overtaking, no stopping, no U-turn, no horn, speed limit and width limit. But here are few different cases like stop sign and give way sign which has their own unique symbols. That's all about regulatory signs. Now let's move to the next topic which is warning sign. Warning sign are used to warn the road user of certain hazardous conditions that exist on or adjacent to the roadway. Warning sign are to great help in ensuring safety of the traffic. They have white background, red border and black symbols. Signs are to be located at sufficient distances like in national highway or state highway it will be around 120 meter in major district road is about 90 meter in other district road is at 60 meter and in village roads it is about 40 meter respectively different type of warning signs are like left hand curve right hand curve narrow bridge man network uneven road narrow road roundabout in circle, T intersection, side road right and cross road. Now last type of traffic sign is informatory sign. These signs are meant to provide information on direction, destination, roadside facilities etc to the road user. This road sign help a driver in saving time reaching destination without looking around. These signs are normally blue in color. Different types of informatory signs are like filling stations or petrol station, restaurants, hotels, parkings, first aid, medical facilities, refreshments, hospitals, bus stop, route marker sign and road junction approach. These are the various informatory road signs. Now let's discuss the next topic which is traffic signal. So a traffic signal is used as an instructing device that indicates the road user to act according to the displayed sign. The traffic signals ensure the road safety and to make things simple to understand. These signals have been using a universal color code. There are various types of traffic signals are used. First is fixed time signals. These signals are set to repeat regularly, a cycle of red, amber yellow and green light. Depending upon the traffic intensities, the timings of each phase of the cycle is predetermined. Fixed time signals are the simplest type of automatic traffic signals which are electrically operated. But the drawback of these signals is that the cycle of red, yellow and green goes on irrespective whether on any road there is any traffic or not. Also traffic in the heavy stream has to stop at the end phase. Second type is manually operated signals. In this type of signals the traffic police watches the traffic demand from a suitable point during the peak hours at the intersection and varies the timings of these phases and cycles accordingly. Third type is traffic actuated or automatic type of signals. In these signals the timings of the phase and cycle are changed according to traffic demand. In semi-actuated signals, the normal green phase of traffic stream may be extended up to a certain period of time for allowing the vehicles to clear of the intersection. 
in fully actuated signals computers assign the right of way for the traffic movement on turn basis of traffic flow demand fourth type is special traffic signal these signals are used to warn the traffic when there is a red flashing signal the drivers of vehicle must stop before entering the nearest crosswalk at the intersection or at a stop line where marked flashing of yellow signals are used to direct the drivers of the vehicles traffic to proceed with caution now let's move to the next traffic control device which is traffic light it is a raised source of light on the edge of the road which is often mounted on a lamp column or a pole either on the side of the road or within the median or suspended on a wire above the road to provide illumination street lighting can provide safety benefits to mid block and intersection locations and can also improve safety for pedestrians particularly at crossing points now let's move to the next traffic control device which is traffic markings they are made of lines patterns words symbol or reflectors on the pavement curb dividers or on the fixed objects they are made using paints in contrast color and brightness there are number of types of road markings let's discuss all in detail first type is pavement marking as you can see in figure white strips in the middle of the road pavement is known as pavement marking these strips can be marked differently for different purposes like here it is marked as a dotted line which indicates one can change the lane while driving while solid line indicates one cannot change the lane or overtaking the vehicles it helps in smooth and harmonious flow of traffic along guided lanes next type is curb marking here you can see black and yellow color strip which is raised portion at the edge of the pavement along the side of the road which is known as curbs these are the curbs they are painted with either alternative black and white strips or in black and yellow strips they divide pedestrians walkway and roadway it helps to guide rainwater on the roadway to the drainage line now the next type is object marking sometimes objects adjacent to the carriage way or roadway may pose some obstruction to the flow of traffic objects such as subway piers and abutments culvert head walls small temple or a tree these are the objects which are the obstruction this cause serious hazards to the flow of traffic and must be marked to reduce the accident rate now next type is reflector unit marking it is safety device used on roads which reflects with light at night they are made with plastic ceramic thermoplastic paint etc it is available in different shapes and colors mainly placed on the changing line of the lanes and edge of the pavement it helps to identify boundary of lanes while night driving now next type is road delineators as shown in screen delineators are tall pylons similar to traffic cones mounted on the road surface or along the edge of the road they are used to channelize the traffic they are usually seen on dividers of the bridges and for maintenance work now let's discuss traffic islands traffic islands are raised area constructed within the roadway to establish physical channels through which the vehicular traffic may be guided this can be classified into four types based on functions first type is divisional islands as you can see this is a divisional island is also called as divider they are intended to separate opposing flow of traffic on a highway with four or more lanes by thus dividing the highway into one way road so that the head on collision can be eliminated next is channelizing islands these are the channelizing island they are used to guide the traffic into proper channel through intersection area it is the separation or regulation of conflicting traffic movements into definite path of travel by traffic islands or pavements marking to facilitate the safe and orderly movements of both vehicles and pedestrians next is pedestrian islands 
These are the pedestrian islands. It is a small section of pavement or sidewalk completely surrounded by asphalt or other road material like concrete, where pedestrians can stop before finishing the crossing the road. It is typically used when a street is very wide, as the pedestrian crosses can be too long for some individuals to cross in. They may also be seen on the roads with hard speed limits. It reduces the exposure time experienced by pedestrians in the intersection. Last is Rotary Islands. The raised platform of suitable shapes built on the road intersection are called as Rotary Island. This is the Rotary Island. The main objects of providing a rotary are to eliminate the necessity of topping even for crossing streams of vehicles and to reduce the area of conflict. The crossing of vehicles is avoided by allowing all vehicles to merge into the stream around the rotary and then to diverge out the desired radiating roads. Now let's discuss the last topic of today's lecture which is intersection. So an intersection is defined as the general area where two or more highways join or cross within which are included the roadway, roadside facilities for traffic movement in that area. The efficiency, safety, speed, cost of operation and capacity of road system very much depended on this intersection design. Various forms of intersections are like T intersection, Y intersection, multiple intersection, cross intersection and in skew intersection one inclined road is connected with the main road. Here skewed cross intersection is the combination of cross and skewed. Staggered is the different than cross intersection as in cross road connected to the one point while in staggered it is not connected at one point it is in staggered or uneven manner. Last is Q staggered intersection which is the combination of staggered and skewed. Now let's move to the classification of intersections. It is classified into two broad groups. First is intersection at grade and second is grade separated intersection. First we will discuss intersection at grade. In this all roads meet at the same level. This intersection can be further classified into three types like on channelized intersection, channelized intersection and rotary intersection. First is unchannelized intersection. In this type of intersection, there is no provision of traffic islands or dividers to channelize the traffic flow. Let's see the examples of unchannelized intersections. First is T plane intersection where there are no dividers in that. Second is T flared intersection. Here in flared at the intersection width of the road is increased for less congestion of traffic and the third is cross plane intersection. Fourth type is cross flared intersection and the last is skewed plane intersection. Now let's move to the second type of intersection at grade which is channelized intersection. In this type of intersection traffic islands or dividers are provided to channelize the traffic flow or regulate the traffic flow. Let's see some examples of channelized intersection. First is T partial channelization. In partial channelization, the number of dividers is provided only on main roads, not on the minor roads. Now the second type is T complete channelization intersection in which all connecting roads have islands or dividers for proper traffic flow. And next is cross complete channelization. Here you can see in all roads number of dividers or islands are provided. And the last is skewed partial channelization. Because of partial the inclined road or minor connecting road haven't have the dividers or islands. Now let's move to the third type of intersection at grade which is rotary intersection. A rotary intersection is a specialized form of intersection at grid in which traffic moves in one direction around a central island. For keep to the left rule 
or vehicles approaching in the intersection are forced to move round around the central island in an orderly manner and wave out to the rotary into their respective desired direction. Let's discuss various types of rotary intersection. First is circular rotary intersection. Second is elliptical intersection. Third is turbine type of intersection. And the last is tangent intersection. These all four types are based on their shapes. Now let's move to the second type of intersection which is grade separated intersection. In this type of intersection, intersecting roads are separated by difference in level, thus eliminating the crossing problem. This type of intersection cause least delay and hazard to the crossing traffic. It increases traffic safety and gives efficient operation of traffic flow. Let's discuss the example of grade separate intersection. First is diamond interchange which is a popular form in urban location where major and minor roads are crossing at different levels. It is designed for a relatively narrow right of way of major road. Second type is clover leaf interchange. Its name comes from one leaf having same shape as you can see in figure. There is a four leg interchange with a single structure. It is a popular and used when Two high volume and high speed roads are intersecting with each other. Its main advantage is that there are two points of entry and exit on each roadway. The first exit is provided before the crossroad structure allows right turn movements and the second exit immediately after crossroad structure allows for the left turn movements. Its main disadvantage is that U-turns are long and operationally difficult and slow. And the last is Rotary Island. It is the type of grade separate intersection. It is similar to the Rotary Interchange which is discussed just before this topic. Except in this type, intersecting roads are not at the same level. It is also a fall leg interchange which is used where land area is less and new turns are easy. Its disadvantage is low traffic capacity and straight traffic on one road is required to wave with turning traffic from the other road. That's all about this lecture. I hope you all understand traffic regulations, traffic control devices and various types of intersections. See you soon in the next lecture. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel Civil Line. Thank you.